Hi people, so um, I did a lot on all those poll things on YouTube asking what people wanted for future videos. Um, only got one vote so far, which is hardly surprising. I actually had a feeling no one would vote, and that was for a story time. So today I'm doing a story time on when I came very close to losing my left leg, which is still a lot bigger than it should be. So basically, one day, um, I just got this massive pain in my leg and then like this lump started appearing and it was like right up at the top of my leg like on my thigh and it just started getting bigger and bigger I was like what the fuck is this and I thought it was an abscess like my sister's had a lot of abscesses like in her thigh and she had to have like you know basically had it cut open and then she was left with an open hole until it healed Um, it sounds really gross and I was really worried that that's what happened to me Um. But I thought it would go away and like, I've had the abscesses before, I've had that an abscess more like from a cut but I've had that a few times where like it turned into an abscess and, so, and then you know usually it'll just pop and go away or it'll just you know go away but so I, I waited but then because it was so deep in my leg I was like this isn't going to burst or it's going to burst inside me so then eventually I phoned NHS 24 which for anyone outside the UK it's basically a number where you know, it's a bit like a, a sort of healthcare number thingy, like, you know, rather than, like, just going to hospital for silly things, well, you know, it might not seem silly to the person. You know, a lot of people go into hospital for something they don't really need to go to hospital for. So, basically, you phone them, like, a lot of the time these days, even if you phone an ambulance, they will quite often say, no, phone H NHS 24. So, I phoned them, and basically, they arranged for a taxi to take me to hospital to get checked. And at the hospital... The doctor said she thought it was a blood clot, not an abscess. So then, like, so I got sent to see that woman first in a little room, and then I got taken through to A and E, and she put in a little cubicle. Um, and like a nurse came and looked at it and stuff, and he said the doctor would come round, even though I'd already seen a doctor to begin with. Um, <clears throat> basically they were like, yeah, so you're gonna be like this for a while, but like, you're just gonna have to wait for it to get better. And then they were like, right, you're free to go home now. And I was like, what do you mean free to go like, I can't walk. <laughs> like, I literally, like, I was having to walk, like, at home. I had this, like, drum thing. It's, like, about this big. It was, like, an African drum thing that my granny brought me back from Africa. And um, I was walking with that, basically. I put my hands on the sides and, like, put it down on the floor. And, like, so I put all my weight on that so I could shuffle forward because I couldn't put any weight on my leg. And it was, it was really big. It was just blowing up like this. It was massive. So basically they told me to just go home and wait and I was like, what? Um, told them I couldn't walk so they gave me crutches which really didn't help because of where the pain was like it was actually easier to just hobble than to use the crutches. But um, so basically I was just waiting thinking it would get better. And then like, after about two months like my leg was literally like this. Like it didn't look like a leg. Like it looked like the size of my body. Like it was huge. It was so bad I couldn't walk at all. I could, I'd been in bed this entire time, I couldn't even get up to go to the bathroom, like literally I had a, a little, I think it was an old ice cream tub or something next to my bed and I had to piss in that, like I literally could not get up to go to the toilet. This is my bedroom, this is my bathroom, that's how close it is. And I was crying day and night, just in so much pain and I was taking so many painkillers as well, I was taking paracetamol, ibuprofen and codeine um, and like the maximum amount of each one and it just it would not get rid of the pain it was so so painful um like towards the evening like once i'd had you know several doses of each type of painkiller then it would start to go away a bit and i would kind of relax a bit but then like after i would wake up in the morning like i would literally be screaming in pain like i'd be lying there and be like, <laughs> like i'm not exaggerating it was that bad and i'll be crying my eyes out with te tears streaming down my face that like it was probably the most painful thing I've ever experienced and like but I mean why wouldn't it be literally when your leg is the size of a normal person's waist like it's gonna hurt like it was just so swollen and then like my boyfriend kept saying you need to go back to hospital but then I was like well I've been to hospital they told me just to wait for it to get better but then I got some kind of infection and I was basically well, I'd be sleeping and then I'd just suddenly wake up going <laughs> like that. 
like not like having a seizure or anything, it was just like really, really violent shaking and I would feel like I was freezing cold but I was actually like if you felt my skin like really like that, it was burning, burning hot. Um and then my boyfriend started getting mad because he couldn't sleep because I was doing that all night, all the shaking and the crying and the screaming and um oh and also I would wake up absolutely drenched in sweat, like it basically there was basically a whole outline of my body on the bed, except there was a big puddle, it wasn't just an outline, it was like a massive puddle around my entire body and it was soaking, like if you put your hand on it, it actually felt like a puddle, like it wasn't just damp, it was a puddle, it was so, so bad. Um, so basically, yeah, I had to change the bed about three times a day, I ended up having to put like plastic bags under the sheet because it was soaking into the mattress so bad. And then like, my boyfriend kept saying like, if you don't stop doing this, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna phone an ambulance and send you to hospital. I was like, I mean, that would be nice if you were saying it because you cared, but you're saying it because it's inconveniencing, inconvenience, inconvenience, inconvenient, yeah, inconveniencing you. Um, what was I gonna say? But then eventually, like, it, it did get really, really, really. But I was like, this, this, like, should be healing by now. It's getting worse and worse and worse, and I was getting so sick. Oh, I could not eat a thing. I would be starving and I was like, I need something to eat. My boyfriend was like, you're not going to eat it though. And I was like, well, I need to eat it. And then he'd bring me something and I'd have one bite and then I'd be like, oh, I'm going to be sick. And then other times, like, I wouldn't eat for days and then he'd be like, you can't not eat. You need to just force yourself to eat something. And then he'd bring me something and I'd be like, don't want it. <laughs> don't want it. And then I would just throw up a million times. Like, literally every day I was just being sick over and over again and then just trying to sleep because I was in so much pain just wanting to go sleep and not having to think about it. And then, yeah, and then if I needed a pee I had to just like get over, roll over the side of my bed, pee in a fucking pot, literally pissing in a pot. And then try to crawl back into bed and every time I'd done that, see every time I just rolled out of bed to pee, even though I wasn't going to the bathroom, I was just literally getting off the side of the bed. I would end up crying so bad afterwards because it was so, so painful. So then eventually I phoned NHS 24 again. This time they sent an ambulance and they told me, like once I was in the hospital, they told me that I had some kind of massive infection. I'm not sure how I got the infection or what it was. I don't know if it's related to the clot. I don't know. I'm not a medical person. I just know I had a massive infection and I needed five types of antibiotics, like five types of IV antibiotics all at the same time. Um, so basically they were saying I was going to have to stay in hospital for that. Like, I was like, no, you're not putting needles in my arms. Like, cause I, I've, I've always had bad pains. Like, I used to be in hospital all the time as a child. And they would just poke me and poke me and poke me and poke me. And my mum would eventually have to say, no, get someone else to do it. Because they just couldn't get my veins. They're just really dodgy. So, yeah, this time they ended up having to get a scanner. Like, they actually had to get a scanning thing and be like that on my arms, like, looking for veins. Um, so, yeah, I had to send for five types of antibiotics biotics from infection and that's why I'd been shaking so much and like my whole <laughs> all that stuff <laughs> but also the clot which just started out as like one round clot like this maybe not this big but it was a big clot Um, yeah so basically because I'd been sent home and just left it to get worse when they told me it would get better it spread the entire length of my leg right from my ankle all the way up to my groin like my entire leg was blocked like all the way there was not one bit of healthy vein it was just blocked and my leg was just going like woo, 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 bigger and bigger and bigger yes I'm wearing my Christmas pajamas again so what <laughs> um yeah so it was just blowing up like blood was going down and it couldn't come back up or was it like yeah so it was the vein was blocked so the blood was going down in the arteries and it couldn't come back up so my leg was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger um, so then I spent, I spent about two weeks in the hospital and it was absolutely horrible. They were taking blood from my fucking arteries. That was terrifying. But basically while I was in there, they had to do a big scan on my leg um, to check. There was this big massive, like, it was a big chunk like this on my leg that was just solid. It was a solid, solid lump. And they said that they were worried that that might be a big pocket of infection. Um, so they had to send me for a scan, but the person doing the scan never actually bothered to check that. And then they were saying basically that I could lose my leg and that even with just the, even if I could, even if they got rid of the blood clot, 
like they were saying that they thought there was a big massive pocket infection in my leg and that they were basically going to have to speak to the surgeons anyway which was absolutely terrifying. I was just sitting there thinking like, I came into hospital about two months ago asking for treatment for my leg. You sent me home without treatment and now you're telling me that I might have to have surgery and possibly even have my whole leg amputated. Like, what the actual fine fuck? I don't understand. That was just such a messed up story. Like, I just wish I was a stronger person because if I was, I would have sued them for that. But it was one of the most terrifying times of my life and it was so painful and it was so hard on my boyfriend as well and you know it was just it was just so unnecessary like it was months of my life i couldn't walk and they didn't even give me any physiotherapy or anything while i was in hospital like my friend's a nurse and she was like if, if i'd known you were there i would have come in and i would have made sure that they gave you physio and stuff like other people in my ward were getting physio like i was literally watching them like we made to walk back and forward and try their little mobility aids and everything. Me, nothing. It's like, you're young, you're tough shit. And oh, just everything was so painful. I kept being sick. And it, they put me in a wheelchair to take me um, to get scans and stuff. And because, like, my leg was pressing on the wheelchair just by sitting there, like, that was making me want to throw up. Sitting on the toilet as well. Um, but I was, they were taking me to the toilet or the wheelchair. Well, it was actually like a mode, but they were just wheeling me to the toilet in it, and so I could actually use the toilet. Um, and I was pressing on my leg, and then when I was sitting on the toilet, I was like, <coughs> and it was still so painful. And then every time I got back into my bed, I would just be sick everywhere. Like, it was just, every time I moved, it was just so painful, I would throw up. Like, but then, towards the end of my stay, they started saying, no, we can't wheel you about, you need to walk. And they started making me walk to the bathroom. But thankfully they put me in a cubicle, right, well a bed, or a little bay, whatever the hell you call it, right next to the bathroom. They moved me about a few times, but at this point I was next to the toilet. So I would just have to hold on to the walls like this and sort of be like, <clears throat> and sort of clamber to the toilet. And then on the way back I would have to like dive onto my bed. I would make her take a few steps like this, like holding onto the wall. And then I'd be like, <laughs> and dive onto my bed because like, I just felt like I was going to collapse. And then I would have to lie on my side going, <sighs> Like, just trying not to be sick. But this total bitch of a nurse, she ended up chucking me out because I refused to have more blood tests because they were hurting me. She chucked me out with no crutches or nothing. And she, I was like, but I can't walk. And she was like, I've seen you walk to the toilet plenty of times. And I'm like, yeah, and when I come back, I'll be sick. And I have to hold the walls. Like, how is that being able to walk? So then she actually got one of the other nurses to, um, like, one of the younger nurses. This guy was actually quite nice, but... She specifically told him to take me to the front door in a wheelchair because I couldn't walk. But she told him not to wheel me to the bus stop. She said, you can only take her to the front door and then make her walk. How the hell was I supposed to walk? I had to crawl to the bus stop. I'm not joking. Literally on the ground crawling with this massive heavy backpack. So I asked my boyfriend to bring me some stuff in. He brought me the heaviest bag of crap. Fucking colouring books and everything. Like what? Like ones like this thick. Like, I went through a phase of like finding colouring and really therapeutic but like I don't know how we thought I was supposed to carry all that home um, so I was basically crawling to the bus stop nobody gave a shit, nobody offered to help me and um, the bus drove away without me, the bus actually was just at the bus stop and I was like just across the road I mean it's not even a proper road, it's like a car park, it's not a real road, it's not like it was busy I was just trying to like hop all over, I was in the road and I was like what? Like you can't see my hands, but I was like that, I was like wait, 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 like sort of crawling along and the bus just it literally just went, it drove around me and went away, I was like oh, how the fuck? And then I had to just sit on the ground at the bus stop waiting for another bus and it was so painful but also I had to get two buses home I mean, when I tried to get on the next bus, it was so busy. There was a massive queue waiting to go on it. I was in so much pain. And I was, like, trying to crawl onto the bus. And, like, all the seats were taken, including the disabled seats. And I was like, shit. But then, thankfully, someone could see the pain on my face and offered me their seat. So, it was something floating in my water. So, it was all good. So, basically, I came home. had to go back to using that drum to walk about. But at least I was walking a bit because the swelling had gone down a bit because I was on like several different blood thinners um, so yeah it had gone down a bit but I still couldn't walk so I was still needing help to walk I could only just sort of hobble between my bed and the bathroom but at least it's better than I could before but then basically yeah I just had to teach myself to walk again like they didn't help me like I was because um, 
because it had been so long that I wasn't walking because of this leg being buggered. I know you can't see what I'm pointing to, but my left leg, like my right leg was mangled too. My left leg was actually, because I'd been sleeping like, it was too painful to keep sleeping it straight. So I'd had it literally bent up like this when I was sleeping. So basically it got stuck in that shape. So even when I was trying to start to walk again, this, this leg was stuck like that. But I couldn't stretch my leg out, it was completely stuck like that. And the other leg, even though that hadn't had any problems, but because I hadn't been walking, that leg became really weak as well, so I could barely walk at all. So, yeah, basically, once I got out, I was just up and, like, when I, well, when I did try and start walking again, like, I just had to basically put all my weight on the crutches, like, it should have been two healthy arms and a healthy leg and just one bad leg, but nope, ended up with two bad legs because I had been unable to walk for so long that my other leg just ended up buck too. But when I first got home, I was mostly in bed because I couldn't really move my legs still and, well, both my legs were buggered by that point. But the bad leg was basically stuck like this, as I said. So I would lie in bed and I would just sort of go like this. But try and move it a tiny bit. That's literally all I could do. Like, imagine this is my knee. Right, that's my thigh and that's my bottom of my leg. Like my leg was stuck like that. Like, you know, usually a healthy leg, you can straighten it like this, or you can have it bent like that. But mine was literally stuck like this. So I was just, you know, just trying to use my arms to pull it a little bit like that. It really hurt, but I just had to force myself, basically. I slowly started to learn to walk again. Um, uh, I was on crutches for a while. Um, it was really hard for the crutches because of the type of problem that I had and where it was in my leg. Like, the crutches didn't help much, but because my other leg, basically I lost all the muscle in both my legs because I hadn't walked for so long. So basically, you know, I needed up, like I could not stand, I was not physically capable of standing up on my legs. So, um, yeah, basically I had to just try and use the crutches, but I was like this, like, like bent over, it was horrible. But, um, also, one day I went out, I was trying to get the bus and I, I just got out onto the main road and I saw the bus going to the bus stop and usually I would just sprint across the road and I would not sprint, I can't run for shit. <laughs> but you know, I was just trying to get out across as quick as I can. So I tried to do that, but I forgot that my legs didn't work and that I was on crutches and I literally just went <clears throat> on my fucking face. <laughs> like with my arms stuck in the crutches, I wish the camera could see wider. Like, my arms were, you know, they were in the crutches, so I was like, and ended up like lying on the ground all twisted, like my legs and my arms were so like, <laughs> I was like an absolute idiot. And I, honestly, I'm lucky I didn't break my arms because they were like in the crutches, like they could have literally snapped my arm off. It was horrible. And it was so painful and so embarrassing. And some guy across the road was like, excuse me, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I just forgot my legs didn't work. <laughs> I bet he was like, what? How can you forget your legs don't work? <laughs> but I mean, it's just, even though it's been several months, like, where my legs didn't work, like, I mean, most of the time I've been in my bed, so I didn't really think about it. <laughs> and this was me, like, trying to get back outside, and then it was just like, Pfft. oopsie. So basically, I had to put in a lot of effort to try and learn to walk again, and, um, you know, just try and rebuild the muscle and be able to actually hold myself up. Um, and it started going down a bit with the blood thinners, but then something else happened, like the bottom half of my leg just started to swell up again. But I don't think it was from a, um, I don't think it was from the clot, I think it was like some kind of infection, so it was bright red, and it was, it was just like, like swelling really, really, just really, like the skin looked too tight for how fat it was and it looked like it was going to explode. You know like when a sausage goes and just splits open? It looked like it was going to do that. It was like, my skin looked shiny. Like it was really, really shiny. It was red and it was shiny and it was so, so stretched so far. Like it looked tight and it was just it was scary. Um, during that time, like the, the crutches actually were more useful at that point because that was, you know, closer to my ankle than rather than being like up at the top of my leg here. So it did actually help a bit more at that point, but I couldn't wear shoes because my foot as well, my foot is so swollen, I couldn't get shoes on. So basically I could not go outside, so I couldn't really use the crutches anyway. Well, I could use them to get room to room, that was it. But, um, 
when I did have to go out, there was a time I had to go somewhere with my boyfriend, um, I had to wear his trainers. It's sort of about like three or four sizes bigger than my trainers, but I had to wear them because it's all I could get my foot into. <laughs> I felt like an idiot. Like, there was a big gap at the end like this where there was like no foot in there, you know, just like where toes should have been, there was nothing, so they were like, mm, it was like wearing flippers, like just far too long. It was horrible, but it was all I could get my feet into. But then I did eventually recover, and then I couldn't, I couldn't walk far, um, I couldn't walk fast, and I couldn't walk long distances. But Edinburgh and Scotland in general is very hilly. There's loads of ups and downs, and up and down, and stairs and drops and stuff. Um, so one day when we were walking through town and I went up this big set of stairs I actually managed to get all the way up um, and then I actually sent my boyfriend back down to the bottom to take a picture because I wanted to remember it. Turns out we weren't all the way up yet, I still had quite a bit to go. But I still did it! My Mima and my mother left me these lovely comments. Basically that's when I knew that I was that was going to be fine. Actually, I do still have problems with my leg. Um, I, d I have flare ups all the time, just I mean, the blue in my leg will just suddenly swell up and it will hurt. And even when it's, you know, when it's at its best, it's still a lot bigger than my other leg. It's really big. I can't wear, like, you know, I can't wear skinny jeans. I can't wear any kind of boots. Like, even like my, my welly boots. Welly boots, that sounds so stupid. So just rubber boots, though. Oh, right, my, my rain boots, that's what I'm going to call them. My rain boots, they did, like, they're so tight up here, they're like, like, even if I manage to get them on, I can't get them off, because I'm like, and it, like, it just suctions in because it's so tight. Uh, look at, look at that. You know, I'm putting my things down, so I'm going to shave my legs. Oh, I mean, oh, screw that, like, but that's a big leg. That's the bottom of my leg. That, that, that looks like a thigh. So, yeah, uh, I have sort of lasting, but this was five years ago, and my leg is still pretty mangled. So, yeah, it was a horrible, horrible experience. I never want to go through it again, and I, I want my leg back. Like a normal leg, not a big, massive leg. But, yeah, um, so thank you for watching. I'm sorry I waffled on for quite so long. Um, if you would like to see more story things, let me know in the comments. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Bye. I just wanted to point out in this picture, since a lot of people like to call bullshit on every little thing, um, I know it kind of looks like I've just stretched all of my legs out, like edited the picture. Um, it's just that I've got two completely different socks on, and if you look at the right foot, like at the ankle, you can see a red line where the sock would usually be. So. Yeah, it's literally just that my socks are different, but the left leg was three inches wider, so regardless of how the picture looks, my leg was a hell of a lot bigger than it should be.